Joshua chapter 1 and verse 2 is our reference scripture. And it's from this scripture we have borrowed our theme for the year 2024, which is right there. We are calling it Advancing for Conquest. We'll be officially dedicating this theme at the end of the service. And we have picked this theme from Joshua 1 verse 2. This is what God will do with us the whole of this year and possibly next year. We'll be advancing and taking conquest wherever we are. And this says, this was what God spoke to Moses, to Joshua after the death of Moses. A new chapter, a new book, a new page, a new year opened. Now he said this, and I want us to read it together. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, and to the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Now, this is what we are going to do now. We are going to personalize that one. Because if this is going to have an impact on you, you will make it very personal. Is that okay? So instead of saying, Moses, my servant is dead, you will say, the year 2023 is gone. Not dead. It's done what? It's gone. Then instead of saying the children of Israel, we will say the children of GCI. GCI. Can you blow it again, my friend? Bring it back to where it is. I think we'll get it right. Uh, there, you've said Israel. Okay, let's move on. The year 2023 is gone. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, and to the land which I do give to them, even to the children of GCI. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Father, as we share this word this morning, to officially declare our theme for the year 2024. We say thank you for the year 2023, the year of synergy. Indeed, you helped us to synergize. Out of that synergy, all these men and women are gathered here. All the ministries have, gone, have, have, have been done. All the blessings we've enjoyed, we have shared with one another. And here we come to the year 2024, a year that we are trusting you to advance for conquest. I pray, Father, bless us as we receive this word. Let this be the word that we shall run with in this year. To receive every good thing that, Lord, you have kept in store for your people. To receive every blessing that, Lord, you've given us as a church and indeed as a nation. Thank you for those who are listening and those who are receiving. And thank you for, for me that is giving and your Holy Spirit that is helping me to deliver this message. We give you praise and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray and together we say amen. amen and be seated in the presence of God. Now, I will try to be very brief. Now, the theme, rather, the theme is advancing for conquest. And this morning, I'm simply doing an introduction. God willing, next Sunday, I'll pick it up from where I'm going to stop. And we'll continue until we ground it in our hearts. And our pastors here and our leaders will pick this theme and run with it in our sermons, in our messages, in our ministries, as we have done with the theme on synergy. And for the purpose of this meeting, this fellowship this morning, I ha I have, I'm calling my mini sermon the in, the face of, in the face of uncertainty. In the face of uncertainty. That's what I'm calling my sermon this morning. And I will try my best to see if I can deliver this in the shortest possible time. Now, this message is being delivered to Joshua after the death of Moses. And keep that at the back of your mind. Moses is a man who has been with Israel for a period of 20 years from the time they left the land of Egypt. It was not being delivered when they were leaving Egypt. It was being delivered to Joshua when Moses is dead. That's why the Bible begins by saying, after the death of Moses. God said to people, Moses, my servant, is dead. So this message came at a point where Israel was going through a crisis. What I would call here, uncertainty. Uncertainty. This is why I'm, I'm, term, I'm saying in the face of uncertainty. And the reason was very simple. The man Moses is a man who had been with Israel for a very long period of time. From their departure from Egypt, all the way in the wilderness, to the brick of the land which they were entering. They were just about to enter the land of Canaan, and there was the River Jordan, which they were, about, they were supposed to cross over and then get into the land. When they were just about to receive the promise which God had given to them, when they were just about to inherit the land that they had been looking forward to 
For a period of 40 years, they've been struggling in the wilderness. They've been struggling under the scorching heat of the sun. They've been struggling under the colds of the night. They've been struggling under all attacks that were in that wilderness. The Bible calls it the terrible wilderness. There were scorpions there. There were snakes there. There were all manner of things in that wilderness. There were moments when they had no water. And this man, Moses, was the key man who would go to God in prayer and they would receive water. They, they had no food in the wilderness. Thrice they complained about food. At some point, God gave them bread, which they got tired with. God gave them manna, which they were unsatisfied with. And through the wilderness, these men have known nobody, but have just known one man who is called Moses. And this is the man whom they have faith in. This is their deliverer. This is the man who is actually, who is the promise in them to give them the land which they were going to. And then suddenly, this man, Moses, is actually dead. I want you to imagine when such a kind of a thing happened, what do you think runs in the minds of those people who are depending on you? And this reminded me, in 1978, I don't know how many of you were around 1978. I think Pastor Geshuki here would agree with me. 1978, this country lost the father of this nation. If I'm saying the truth, Pastor Geshuki, you will lift your hand, all right? But if I'm saying a lie, you will, you, you, you will keep quiet. You were in the airport. Air Force. Do you know, the, can you agree with me, the country became at a standstill. Everything just, because we were so used to Mze Kenyatta, by the way, he was like a god. That man, go and look at his picture. Even the way he has the beard is like Moses. And believe me, people believed in him. He was like a man who, his word was final. It, not, not these jokes that we are playing today. Even to imagine the death of Kenyatta was treason. To imagine. Can you imagine? You to close your eyes and just imagine. The president is dead. That one, they pick you. I don't know how they were going into the minds of people to find out whether you are imagining or not. But leave alone that. The man was a great leader. Am I saying the truth? The country was good, very well led in control, taking care of everything. The ministries were working. Believe me, the roads were nice. You would never get a pothole in Nairobi. If it happened today, tomorrow, somebody would be there fixing it. Am I saying right? Where I lived in Jerusalem, we, we had loans, green loans. I'm talking about green loan, loan, L-A-W-N. Believe me, machines used to cut them. We had very nice drains where every morning somebody was there cleaning them. And the country was, country was top-notch, nice, very nice. I miss those days, but there's hope. 2024, there is hope. <laughs> to imagine him, my point is this. That day when Kenyatta died, nobody expected it. I was in school then, in Sili Secondary School, and suddenly we are actually told, we are, the, the, the principal calls, us, calls the attention of the, 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 the kids to their assembly, and he tells us, we've been ordered everybody to go home and wait until further notice. Only to tell us Kenyatta is dead. And when that happened, everything came to a standstill. People were afraid. They did not know what to do. They, they don't know how the future looks. They don't know who will be the next leader. They don't know how things are going to work. But leave alone that. On that day, when President Moy was taking over, these are words recorded. You can go to the clips. You'll find them. Moy made a declaration which clicked in my mind when I was preparing this sermon. He said this, and I quote, he said, the task which has fallen upon me is a very difficult one in his opening remarks, and that thing stuck in me. He was looking at the magnitude of the, the work he was supposed to do. He was looking at the future of this nation. He was looking at the hopes and aspirations of the people. What actually the people believed in the former leader. And he looked at himself and he was wondering, a mere boy from Rift Valley, can I really be able to meet, to, to be up to the task? I want to believe this was the mind that Israel had. Because these Israelites had no nobody, no other leader, but Moses. Now, let me bring you further. They were not the same Israelites who left the land of Egypt, by the way. Actually, those who knew Moses, at, when they left Egypt, had all died. These were a crop of a new people who were born 40 years after they had left the land of Canaan, I mean, I mean, the land of Egypt. Because remember the rebellion they had the first time when they wanted to enter the land. God told them, anyone below 20 will die. He'll die in the wilderness. So these were men who were children when they left Egypt, and the men who had been born in the wilderness, when Moses was there. You can imagine the trust they had in this man, the faith they had in this man. You can, you can imagine the hopes that they had in this man. And this reminded me, what normally rings in the minds of people when this kind of a situation arises? 
When a founder, visionary, a leader suddenly dies. When somebody or some, someone whom people have put their hopes and, their, and trust in him somehow dies. What happens when somebody is just about to get into the line of his next level? You are just about to get that promotion. Just about to get that healing. Just about to marry that woman and marry that young man whom you've waited for for 25 to 27 years. And suddenly on the eve of that marriage, something happens that postpones the marriage or messes up the marriage or gives you uncertainty on what you're supposed to be. I remember one instance. I didn't need to mention this. I left Kenya on first. I left Kenya. When was the coup? Which, which, which date? You and I, Air Force. On the 2nd of August. I left Kenya on 26th of August, July. Arrived in India. A week later, there was the coup d'etat. A week later, while I was in Delhi, I'm still finding my way, I saw coup in Kenya foiled on a screen. Now, I want to imagine if, that, if I delayed for only one week, I wouldn't be speaking to you here as your pastor today. My, my plans to India would have been frustrated because for a year or two, nothing happened, am I saying the truth, in this country. Now, I'm imagining Israel at that moment when Moses has just died. And they're asking God, what can we do? They're wondering, can we really enter the land? I'm looking at Israel in the eyes of us, 2024. When all the mess that we have seen in 2023, when all the inflation that we have seen in 2023, when all the things we trusted God for didn't work for us in 2023, perhaps for some of us, for all those things which maybe you are believing God for, maybe never happened in 2023. And here it is, another door opened for you to walk into 2024. As I always say, a new year is another opportunity. A new year is always to provide you with another way of rethinking your life and thinking up and, 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 and committing yourself to your future. Then suddenly, something happens. And you come into the state of uncertainty. For sure, Israel was in a complete state of uncertainty, where I would say the curtains had closed down. And then God appoints another young man, a successor, by the name of Joshua. And he tells Joshua, the words that we have read here, on this portion of scripture, he says, arise, Joshua. He says, go over this mountain, I mean this Jordan, you and all these people into the land which I promised Moses. Let me say this to you. It is not as easy as many of us may read that scripture. When I was meditating on this scripture yesterday, just in my quiet time, I kept on wondering, what is the spirit behind this scripture? I realized there was something behind this scripture which if you don't catch that spirit, this will be a slogan. You will just keep on saying, arise, arise, arise. But when you understand the spirit behind it, and then you take that spirit and run with that spirit, I promise you 2024 will be different. For you, it will be different. Because every written word of God has something behind it. There was a reluctance in the minds of people. I believe people were wondering, how will we make it? This way God told Joshua, arise, arise. There was the river Jordan there. Get over this Jordan. That's another salmon. All these people who are with you, another salmon, the synergy of the people. And then the land which God has given to you, the promise which God has given to us. But to bring this to perspective so that you get to understand this better, I want to post an example here to you that will help you to, co to connect with this. I can tell you Joshua was the most, most worried man than anybody on earth you can imagine. Number two, Israel were the most worried people. Understanding who Moses was, they wondered, can we really make it? I don't know that you are wondering, can I really make it this year? Can I really make it this year? Can I really make it this year? Can God really remember me this year? I have a word for you, arise. You didn't hear me. It's only the mamas. I love these mamas. They always back me. They're the only ones who say, mm -hmm. all right. I don't know this side if they are. Arise, I'm saying. Arise. Get over that Jordan. Into the land which God is giving to you. This, there were three brutal facts which were very key to Israel. Brutal facts are things which you must confront which are clear. Things which you cannot run away from. The truth is that this Israel was have, experiencing uncertainty. They were in the face of uncertainty. And the reason was very simple. They were wondering, can Joshua take us across? 
And can we be able to cross over to the other side? Why? Three things. Number one, Joshua was simply Moses' servant. He was not a leader per se. And I will give an example that will help you to understand. That's brutal fact number one. He was the least expected to lead Israel to that land. And I can tell you it doesn't matter whether you, people look at you differently, you will make it. Tell your neighbor you will make it. You, you may just look like a simple woman or a simple man, but God has something in stock for you. Joshua was simply a man whom I can call Moses' spanner boy. A spanner boy is the man who carries tools for the key man. And I'll give an example that will make you understand this. In this church, I have one, one, one young man who is my spanner boy. His name is called who? Watson. Watson is my spanner boy in this sense. Nobody knows him. Nobody recognizes him. But this young man, many years ago, about five years ago, the man decided, Bishop, I will be there to carry your bag. If I have an occasion, any occasion, here in church, a service, or I'm going out, Watson will come to my house and he will take my bag from my hands. Every Sunday, the young man will be waiting. He'll appear in the, at the gate there earlier than all of you. And he'll be waiting for me. The moment I drive in, I'm having my, 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 my Bible, my, 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 my iPad, and my phone. These are simple things. I can easily walk with them. Watson will pick them from me, from my car there. Just from my car. And he will walk with them right into the office here and place them in, the, in my boardroom. And the man will sit out there and wait until the service starts. When the service begins, he will pick them again. You see, I always enter through this door. He doesn't allow me to enter with my tools here. When you see me entering with them, it's a technical problem somewhere. He will pick my, my books, and he will not. How many of you have seen Watson through the, that door? The young man will go around. I try telling him, Pastor, he says, Apana, that's for you, Bishop. He'll go around and enter through the back. And he'll walk with my staff and place it here. Right here. Then he will leave me to come through that door, the front door, because I am the bishop. <laughs> when I'm appearing, everybody's seeing the bishop doing what? Coming. She so always look at me coming. And then I come, I sit here, Watson comes, places my things there, and goes behind and hides there. And he will wait when the service is over. He'll pick my things and go around with them and place them in my bag and ensure my bag is safe. When, when I'm done with church, he will take the keys of my car. He will open my car and place my stuff there and lock and hold the key until I leave church. He will sit in church up to 8 o'clock. If I have a board meeting, he'll be here up to 8 o'clock. When he sees me go from the gate, the young man goes home. Is Watson here? Because some people may think, I'm, Watson, come, 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 come. I want to give you as an example. This young man, I'm promoting him. He's not married. Come here, Watson. This is the young man. Whether I, I don't organize for anything, when I'm going out for any mission, Nelly is here. We hear the door ringing in Baraka. Ping. Who is outside there? Watson. He comes to my house to pick my bag and put it in my car. Now, how many of you know this young man? But just by face. Is there anything you know about him? That is great. Look at the way he looks. Young man, very short. He doesn't have many words. He just smiles like that. That's all he does. Even me, he never speaks anything to me. He just smiles. I try to provoke a conversation. He doesn't say anything. <laughs> but here he is. Watson, you're wonderful. Can you appreciate Watson? <laughs> now, I want you to assume, while you are still standing here, because I want them to assess you. Uh, you know, while he's standing here, Mlema is the geo. See, I'm the geo. But yeah, I'm the geo. You like it or not, I'm the geo. <laughs> all right. And then suddenly you hear God saying, the geo is dead. May God forbid. <laughs> All right? And I'm now appointing someone else to take you people to the land of promise that brings you here every Sunday. Pastor Joyce is seated there. You know her. Our, our, our wonderful resident pastor, she's there. See, Pastor Jimmy is here, our wonderful pastor. Pastor Alan is there, our wonderful pastor. And the elders are here and others aspiring like, like, like Pastor Joseph is there. And then... I, the Lord tells me, tell the people that the next leader is Watson. How many of you will believe Watson? Look at him. How many will say amen and clap your hands? Watson, I'm not demeaning you. I'm just giving you as an example. 
because you are Joshua here. You know, you will begin looking at Pastor Joyce and wondering, what is she thinking? You will begin looking at Momani. Is this the elders who decided or who? You will begin wondering, where is GCI going to? And I can tell you, a half of you will go away. A number of you will say, Pastor Mulema didn't hear from God. Some of you will say, Pastor Mulema actually is tribal. What tribe is Watson? I've never even asked him his tribe. I don't even know. But you will begin to go. Many things will be said. You may go back and sit. You're a wonderful man. All right? Now, I'm using that example to tell you that was Joshua. That was Joshua. Joshua wasn't a public figure. He was only public when they went to war at some point, when they began the journey. That's how his career came up. He joined and led an army. And after that army succeeding, Joshua withdrew from the army. And the man says, Moses, I know I, you need me. Because Moses needed somebody to lift up his hands. And he volunteered to carry the bag of Moses. He volunteered to carry the horn of Moses. To carry water for Moses. And to carry the rod for Moses. This is a young man who never had the pleasure or the luxury of sitting in the camp and eating good food in the camp. He was ever on the mountain with Moses, seated there, waiting to see Moses come down, not to hear the voice of God, no. Moses would come down from the mountain. Joshua would embrace him. He would take his bags. He would tell him, man of God, you've been here long enough. Can I carry your things and take you back into the camp? And the Bible even tells me when he was in the camp, he would never leave the camp. So he was not this popular man that everybody expected. Israel had a hierarchy of leadership. There were the 12 elders in Israel. There were the, 20, the 70 leaders in Israel. We had leaders of the clans and leaders of the, leaders of the tribes. We had captains of different regiments in Israel. We even had what I'm calling here the, 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 the priestly, priestly order, where we had the chief priest, we had the priests, and we had the Levites. These were the men that were qualified in quotes to become the next leader of Israel. But God from nowhere tells Moses, this young man, anoint him. This Watson, anoint him. And make him the next geo of, of Gospel Senders International. I tell you, that was the spirit that made Israel to despair. Even, more, even Joshua himself didn't believe it. And that takes me now to what I want to zero on for a few minutes, then I close. It was because of that that Israel just sat there at the brink of the river and they didn't know what to do. So God tells Joshua, help me here. He tells Joshua what? Arise. Can somebody say arise? Arise. arise. And he says, go over this Jordan. Go over this Jordan. And that's the spirit that we want to use in our year 2024. We want you to arise despite your shortcomings. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Despite the uncertainty, despite the way you look at things, things may not appear the way they wa you want them to appear. They may not appear in the manner that you design, you, you design them to appear. But God is telling you, arise. Get over this Jordan. Now, because of that state of uncertainty, the Lord decided, the whole chapter 1 of the book of, the book of Joshua, verse 1 to verse 12, the Lord decided to speak directly to Joshua and the children of Israel to prepare them, to arm them, to equip them for the conquest. And this morning, I may not finish my sermon, and indeed I won't, but I'm at, I want to attempt to equip you for conquest in this year, 2024. In the face of uncertainty, you will make it. You will make it. Point number two, second brutal fact. That's second brutal fact. The first one I said, Joshua was simply an attendant. He was just a man whom nobody would have expected to become the leader. So when he was made leader, people were uncertain. Will we really make it with this man? He has never done any miracle. He doesn't speak God with God face to face. He has, never, he has never commanded the people in a manner that people can have faith in him. But here he is, God is saying, this is your new leader. Number two, quickly, and I'll run through number two very fast. Israel was going to occupy a land that had its own inhabitants. Now listen to me. All this time, 40 years, they were in the wilderness. There were no inhabitants in the wilderness. They were simply fighting what we call as the great and terrible wilderness that is the scorpions and the snakes in the wilderness. They were fighting the cold of the wilderness. They were fighting the, the, the warm, the, the heat of the wilderness. But they have never confronted the owners of the land which they were going to take. To signify to me that when you are now 
conquering. You are conquering that which belongs to you. That land had inhabitants. And not, not, not weak inhabitants. The sons of Anak were there. The Hattites were there. The Canaanite was there. The sites you can mention, Jebusites, Perizzites, all those fellows, well, it was their land. They were inhabitants. And God is telling Joshua, that land is the one I'm giving to you. Now, how can you trust a man who you have never seen work miracles to cause you to fight the inhabitants of that land and occupy the land? Brutal fact number three. Number three. They, and I put it in my notes here. I have said, number three, the occupation was to be done through, and help me here, through what? The use of force. It was not going to be something where you walk in and negotiate. Let me tell you, that promotion, you will not negotiate for it. And you're not getting my point. Upstairs, that, that, that job, you, it will not be negotiable. You will take it by force. And you will do it through prayer. You will do it through the grace of God. Through the favor of God. It was not a matter of negotiation. They were going to take the land by force. By force. The Bible says, Jesus said, this is now Jesus. He said, since the days of John the Baptist, help me here. The kingdom of God, help me, suffers what? Come on, I want to hear it again. The kingdom of God does what? It suffers. And who takes it? And how do they take it? Now listen, in our new dispensation, there is force. This year, you must be a forceful man and a forceful woman. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to be forceful. The vision God has given to me, I'll not let it, I will not wait for someone to do it. Me, you will see me doing it, and I'm doing it. Because if I don't become forceful, I'm missing my inheritance. And I'm missing my land. So they were to take it by force. Three brutal facts. Joshua wasn't the lead expected. Number two, the land had inhabitants. Number three, they were to use force. So what did God do? Because my time is already up. 15 more minutes, I hand over this service. Look at this. The Lord told Joshua, arise. Number two, go over the Jordan. Number three, he says, thou and all these people. Number four, into the land. Let me mention this quickly here. Arise was moving. Don't sit and wait and hear me. This year, don't sit. Usingoje, atibuana taleta. Kama ni mama, tafuta. Muna nielewa? Apana katu ndeng, atataleta. Kama ni mwanaume, usingoje bibi alete. We must join hands and fight. And the meaning of the word arise, I put it in my... My scripture, advance, it simply means making a move. Making a move. If you sit and do nothing, you will not get anything. But if you commit and determine, this year I'm moving. You will, you will move towards your promotion. You will move towards your business. You will move towards your pay rise. You will move towards that thing which God is, has in store for you. That is what God was telling. Number two, he told Joshua, go over this Jordan. The Jordan basically are things which will try to stop you from getting to where you are. Because the Bible says the Jordan was flooded on that day when they were about to cross. So there are things which will become your way to stop you from getting what you need to get. But this year, we are crossing the Jordan. If you believe it, lift up your hand and say, I am. We are crossing the Jordan. And then number three, you and all these people. One of the things which we did very well last year, we delivered very well on the subject of synergy. How many of you are blessed by that subject of synergy? We have learned in our church, you can never do anything alone. That's a secret we have. We have learned when we join forces, we are better than when we are alone. We have learned when we join forces, we can build sheepfolds. And we have done it, by the way. By the end of April, Kitui will be over. And we'll begin Kakamega. Yeah, where I come from, I hope you will, you, 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 you will favor me now. After giving you almost 23 that's by the way. What am I saying here? Synergy. Can somebody say synergy? Yeah. And then number four, the land which I promise you, which means there are promises for you in the Bible which you must take now. Don't wait for somebody to take them while you are watching. So how, what did God do? God decided, and I'm coming now to my last point, to prepare Israel. To prepare Israel. To prepare Joshua. 
Because there is no way you are going to walk it without preparation. And the preparation was basically to take away the spirit of uncertainty. And that's what I intend this service to do for you. As you leave this church today, you are going away with the spirit, a spirit of certainty. Not the spirit of uncertainty. You are living saying, Pastor Mlema, this time I am going to do it. This time I'm believing God for it. This time I have faith God will do it for me. This time I'm trusting God for my wife. I'm trusting God for my husband. Those young people should have said a big amen there. I'm trusting God for my job. I'm trusting God for my children. I'm trusting God for what? Help me. You put whatever you want to put there. That's the spirit. So what did he do? He dedicated Joshua chapter 1 from verse 3 to verse 9. So we read that. I hand over the service. I'll pick it up next Sunday. I hope you'll be in church next Sunday. Okay, let's pick it up. Let's read together. What, uh, 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 whatever, uh, media, let's go through those scriptures. This was Joshua encouraging, God encouraging Joshua and encouraging the people to get the people to know it is possible. To make people advance. Somebody say advance. advance. Tell your friend that you must advance. <laughs> come on, do it nicely. Don't harass your friend. You don't know where he has come from. <laughs> Smile at him first. Smile, Kwanzaa. Allah from Ambie, advance to conquer. Now, it wasn't just going to be a walk in the park. God had now to use verse 3 to verse 9. That's the only place in the Bible where you'll find God talking three times, telling somebody, be, and be courageous, be courageous, be courageous. In the Bible, he was telling Joshua, don't be timid. Telling the people, don't worry, I am with you. And I want to tell you, God is with us. In GCI, God is with us. Despite the shortcomings we've had, three, I lost three of my best friends here, and I honor them. First, Pastor Simon left me. Kennedy left me. Just last year, you all know, Najoli left me. But that doesn't discourage me. It doesn't discourage us. Are you, can somebody say amen? We are still doing what? Advancing. And we are going to make it. Maybe you lost your husband. You can still make it. Maybe you lost your wife, you can still make it. Maybe you lost your job, you can still make it. Maybe the kids have been giving you trouble. You will make it. He began by giving, telling, encouraging him. And let's read together. He said, every place that the sole of your foot shall trend upon, that I have given unto you, as I say to who? So Moses was a reference figure. That man whom you believed in will always be your reference figure. He says... What, wherever you are so, the sole of the foot shall trend, I have given it to you. It means that you must move. If you stay, you will only get where you are. But if you begin moving wherever you move, where you step, you have it. You have it. Then he went further. Let me go this side. These people say normally, Pastor Mlema, you don't love us. What and Rudy Pande here? He said, from where? Can we read? From where? The, the wilderness of this Lebanon. That's where Lebanon is first mentioned. Lebanon. Unto the great river. Where Lebanon is, was supposed to be Israel. Unto the great river, Euphrates. That is where Iraq and Iran is. Okay? God gave them even Iraq. And Iraq. This way, even if they fight Israel, they will not defeat them. He said, all the land of the Hattites, unto the great sea. That is the Mediterranean Sea. He says, towards the going down of the sun, as far as your eye can see. Then he says, shall be your cost. It means this year depends on you. Next to you. Yeah. Now, your progress will depend on you. If you want to be stagnant, it's okay. But the way, what you see, and see here, He's saying as far as your eye can see. You know, when they say the going down of the sun, you wake up in the morning and see where the, where the sun, in the evening, see where the sun is going. Where the sun will now go deep, that's how the far the Lord will take you. And that's the promise he gave Israel. They could only go as far as they needed to go. And I want to tell you, 2024, you can go as far as you want to go. Amen. Let me go to the other point quickly. Number four. Number five. Number five, he told them. One five. One five, am I okay? One five, it's not on screen. 
There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Again, as I was with who? Moses, so will I be with you. I will not fail thee. I will not forsake thee. What I love there, no man will stand before you. It means those things which you are craving for, there are fellows who are interested. There are some characters who are waiting for that promotion. But you know what? God will deal with that fellow. And it will be given to you. If you believed it, you would have said a big amen. amen. There is a fellow who is against your family, against your wife, against your children, against their health. This way we rebuke devils. This way we cast out demons. This way we speak against witchcraft. Because there are people who are interested in hindering your blessing. But can I declare? No man. Tell your friend, no man. It has said there, no man. Not any man shall be able to withstand you in this year. Amen. Believe me, if you have faith, it will work. Amen. This way, this word, I'm telling you, run with it. Run with it. Don't sit back and let anybody intimidate you. Some fellows will try to tell you, you cannot. Some, they will look at your qualification and say, oh, you are lazy. But let me tell you, God does not look at your papers. As much as they are important, God gives you favor. Amen. Favor is beyond what you personally have. Verse 6, quickly, verse 6 says, Be strong and what? And of good courage. For unto these people shall thou divide an inheritance, the land which I saw unto their fathers to give them. Now, God told Joshua and Israel, If you truly want this, then you must be what? Strong. And what? Courageous. Strong and courageous. You know, fear is actually the enemy of courage. Fear. And today there are people who, who cannot do anything because they are afraid. They can't do anything. They are afraid. They cannot start even a project. They are afraid. They cannot even attempt to marry. When I go up. They can't have children. They are afraid. May you have many children. They cannot start a business. They are afraid. They can't start a ministry. They are afraid. So God told Joshua, listen, as much as it's yours, if you don't become courageous, courageous means if you don't throw, throw away fear and move into it by faith, you will never have it. Let's go to verse 7. Verse 7 says, only be thou strong and what? Twice he repeated that because of the condition of uncertainty. And believe me, when you are uncertain about anything, it can kill you. So don't allow uncertainty to take away your miracle or take away your blessing or take away your future. Are you listening to me? Church, are you listening to me? Don't allow that man to take away your future or that woman to take away your future. Allow the spirit of courage, good courage, he says here, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded. The turn not from it to the right or the left, that thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou goest. I learned something here, very prof pro pro profound, as I come to the close. There was only one thing that Moses left with Joshua. And let me tell you, that's the only thing which God has left with his people. You can lack anything, you can miss money, you cannot have everything, but there's only one thing which God will never hide it away from you. And that was his word. That was his word. So Joshua had the law which Moses gave him. After he prayed for him, he told him, take this law. Tell the people to keep this law. To observe it. Because by observing this law, they will prosper. Amen. And I'll tell you, the only way for your miracle is for you. Beside being courageous. Beside you saying, no, no man. You know, people can just keep saying, no man, no man, no man. But let me tell you, but when you believe the word of God and you trust the word of God, you believe it and you trust it. And because it's God who is speaking, the word of God carries the name of God behind it. You know, Joshua, Moses, the name of Moses was very key here. And the name of God was key to Moses. He said, if you keep this law, don't turn from it, observe it. Then whatever you want, you will succeed. And I pray this year, God will help us to observe the law that he has given to us. We will make the Bible the most important thing in our lives. Are you listening to me? 
we will make the Bible. And in this law, there are certain things we must do. We must read the Bible. We must pray. We, there are things God has commanded us, which if we observe and do them according to the word of God, believe me, you will succeed. You will prosper. This coming sun, Saturday, not this one, the coming one, we are dedicating our prayer center in Machakos, in Kyumvi. The Machakos County, in collaboration with the family, they have built a small, beautiful prayer center. They are bought land. We have put a prayer center, which will eventually become the biggest prayer center in Nairobi. I believe that. You know, we are doing it this coming Saturday in honor of Reverend Simon Moasia. And the reason for that is simple. We want you to have a place of prayer. So that when you find some character standing in your way, you will go there and fight them. Are you not getting my point? Are you listening to me? So he told them here, you will keep the law. Keep the law. If you keep the word of God and you trust in God. Because the law was God speaking. The law is where the promise is. Believe me. It is in this Bible where your future lies. It is in this Bible where your eternity is. As long as you believe the word and you trust the word and you do the word, I'm assuring you, you will be successful. Don't be like those men on first, the first Sunday of the year, you come to church. Because it's first Sunday, nenda kanisani mungu, nenda kuomba. Dio mungu anisikie, mwaka yendele. Then after this, we'll only be seeing you on the road, waving, hi bishop. If you're that man, this someone has no meaning to you. But let me tell you from today, love God. Amen. If you are that woman, from today, love the Bible. Amen. From today, join the fellowship of believers. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. If you are, if you are listening to me, raise your hand and say, Bishop, I hear you. Amen. Because our future is there. Finally. Can somebody say finally? finally? I think I'm almost done with this. He says, this book of the law, he says, then you will, be, you, you will do according to it. As written therein, then thou shalt make your way prosperous. And thou shalt have good success. Now, finally, God wanted to affirm his presence. And I'm sure this year, if there is anything we need, is God. Amen. How many of you need God? Yeah. Thank you. You, you. you just feel God. I just want you. When, when, when I'm happy, I want you. When I'm walking, I want you. Wherever I go, I want you. He made that statement, verse 9. Go to verse 9, and I'll close at this. I'll pick it up next Sunday. He says, have I not commanded you? Reminding them. Moses did, now Joshua is doing it. Have I not commanded you? He says, be strong. Can somebody say, be strong? And what now? And of good courage. He says, do not be afraid. Neither be thou. I was wondering, what is the meaning of the word dismay? Pastor Jimmy, have you found out? Dismay. dismay. Hopeless, being... Just hopeless. You look at a, a brother, you just see Amisha. Ukimangalia ndugu sura inakwambia inasoma inakwambia tu huyu ali, aliisha kitambo. He says do not be Oh somebody has already made a definition. Can I see it? There's, there are very good brothers here. Cause somebody to feel concern and distress. Hapo ndio kuna kuanga na pressure. Unamwangalia dada ama ndugu pressure. Mpaka kichwa inaanza kuuma boom 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 boom. Unaona hata misuli imeanza kutokea kwa kichwa huku. Unajua huyu mjamaa yuko under what? This pressure. Now listen. Let's go on. He says, for, help me. For what? What? Help me. Come on. Somebody read that scripture for all of us. What? The Lord, thy God, is where? With thee, where forever, where forever thou goest. Believe me. After reading that, I realized this was a commission that God was giving to Joshua. And Israel, it was the great commission. The great commission. They were now entering into the great commission of the land which God was giving them. This scripture is the same scriptures that Jesus used in Matthew 28. Matthew 28. He didn't say sit. He says go. Arise and go into the whole world and preach the gospel. Good news. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Then he says and baptize them in my, the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them all that I have given you. Then Jesus made the final submission that is in this verse. He says, and lo, can you even lo, I am with you always, even 
unto the end of the world. It means wherever you go, the Lord is with you. Listen to me. Every place that you're going to step, God is there. That business, God is there. That marriage, God is there. That small, small, small investment, God is there. Wherever you are going, the Lord will promote you and promote you and promote you. He will advance you and advance you and advance. You will conquer and conquer and conquer and conquer. If you believe that, shout a big amen. amen. The Lord bless you. I will put a comma. We'll pick it up next Sunday. Can we stand up on our feet and let's make a prayer? Hallelujah. Father, we are grateful. Thank you for your people. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for your word. We came to worship. That's all we did. We came to hear your word, and we've heard it. Because this is the beginning of the year, Lord. We are committing and dedicating ourselves to you. We would have been in better places, swimming, eating, doing many things. But what do they add to our lives? What do they add to our future? But today, Lord, we've come. And indeed, you have heard us. We have ministered in song. We have ministered in worship. We have ministered in your word. And we pray that let this be the beginning of an advancement into conquest for your people. That these men and women will end this year on, a spirit, on the spirit of victory. Victory, Lord. None of them will end this year a failure. But that, Lord, this word will be ingrained in our hearts. Know that you've commanded us to go. And, Father, we are going. We are not going to sit back. We thank you. We bless you. And we worship you. Thank you for first service, second service. The souls that you've saved in the first and the second service. We say thank you, Lord. And we believe even in this meeting, there are people who are getting saved now. There are people who are getting out of their despair. And they are coming to you. Bless them, Lord. And keep them.